Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Mandalorian Time's series <laughs> review. This is a review for Chapter 7, uh, The Reckoning, the penultimate episode of The Mandalorian. I am... You get that. You, you got to drop that penultimate whenever you can. Penultimate. Right? I am the hashtag, the number one Kylo Ren fanboy in the world. Rise Skywalker this week. You didn't say your name. I'm Doug. Trust now. I'm our caster, Dylan. Must to my left. Can you figure I out what you're going on there? Because you're making lots of noise, Taylor. Tim. Let's well, I don't. I want to make your entrance good because all the people here is like <laughs> in a chair going. So maybe you know, show some respect to Kirkland. Professionalism. Yeah, let's show some respect. Do you, do you wear that shirt every Mandalorian anger. review? I wear it every day to be wow. actually yeah, honest. Yeah, I can with smell. You. <laughs> <laughs> it smells like it's smelling again off the I elevator. I am the one and only Kirkland Patzer with no nickname. Sadly. Stop That's moving that cord around. One and only is a nickname. Stop it. The I feel like it's a be. title. Uh, actually, I guess that would be a nickname. Yeah. Title would be. <laughs> Define nickname, right? It could be absolutely anything. That's true. Is the cord making noise when it moves? We shouldn't do that. When you're doing this, when you're just like, like moving in your chair, I yeah. That made I, was no hearing, noise. I was hearing some noises on our prediction. Is this episode? actually making noise? It Taylor. Going like it's, this? Oh, it's Taylor. Is it Taylor? If okay. you move around too much, yeah. If you slightly move your fountain, but if you're like too gripping. Well, how do people like Freddie Mercury run around stage moving the cord? Because that's a whole, that's a million dollar equipment that can like be fine tuned to that. We're just rocking what we can. We're in JJ's fucking basement, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We got to finish oh, this for you. Okay, here, I'll go Who like are this. you? Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? I am uh, Moff Taylor Field. Moff. All right. Moffy Uh Ladies and gentlemen, yes, like we <laughs> said, this is the Mandalorian review. If uh, if you're listening to this currently, whether it's tonight or the day after, you can go listen to our Skywalker predictions because you only got yeah. a few before that, episode. and then the cast is nothing. Or you can listen to it after the movie, too, because that's kind of fun. Yeah, see, back we like these right. guys. see how wrong we were. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, you can listen to our Last Jedi commentary track, so that's lots of fun. Me and Kyle did a Watchmen review. That was good. You did a Jumanji review. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's lots of stuff on the channels. We did Clone Wars Retrospective. Uh, the two things I'll pimp out is, one, in the next 48 hours, 72 hours, this weekend we'll have a full-on spoilers review for Rise of the Skywalker. Man, Am I getting nervous? But this is what I'll say. Everybody, I've seen a lot of people out there. There's already a lot of discourse. <laughs> there are already a lot of people like, ah, oh, I'm a little less excited now. You know what? Go there. Have a good time. Don't think about what everyone says and just go in there and enjoy the movie, all right? That's what you want to do. You just have a good time. And then you can nitpick at this and that. Just try and remember you're a Star Wars fan, you know? Try and love it. But see the movie before you review it, like all these other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Are just talking shit. Uh, <laughs> and then, uh, so we'll do a full-on review for that. And then tune into Mandalorian next week because that'll be our the finale review. But then I also have a, a special announcement to make. So it's going to be for 2020. Ooh. yeah, yeah. Am I fired? Noise. What? Fired. It does have to do with you. Oh, shit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We'll, give you, we'll give you two weeks notice. <laughs> two weeks notice? Taylor's promoted. Yeah, I, don't think, I don't think Taylor's going to like it. You're fired or you're promoted. Oh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No severance pay either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just oh, kicked to the no. curb. So, we're going to give our thoughts about Man Lauren and then jump into spoilers. Who wants to go first? Me? Okay, wow, fine. Right back uh, at you. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I usually try to throw someone else because I talk for. I really want to hear your thoughts, Travis. If you like what we do here, please review, rate, subscribe. The whole shebang. Apple Podcasts gives a nice written review. Thank you, someone gave us a nice five star a few days ago. Ooh. Best oh, podcast. I'm not gonna. Amigos. I'm not gonna. Uh, happy nod to that guy and his username or whatever. Well, oh, the Filoni yeah, phony. That guy's yeah, no, that no <laughs> respect from me. What a rude you, person. You know he's listening. Yeah, but he gave us a nice five-star review. That's five stars is nice, but he... It was like he, he, it is you, know you give someone a compliment, a but you take it away at the same time. Uh, it's like, I really like those shoes. They're very nice. Did you get them at Value Village? But if you look at the ratio, the rest of us agree with that sentiment that yeah, he's yeah, a phony. Yeah. So overall, it's a geek first compliment. So we're if you look at us as like a conglomerate... You know? Yeah, we're all for it. The three to one vote. So yep. uh, thank But yeah, do that. That helps us a lot, especially this week. And if you listen to our stuff, please, so we can climb up those rankings. So if you like what we do, five stars, written review, uh, and then go to the description down below, find video and audio feeds everywhere. Yes. Uh, this episode, I really enjoyed it. It was a good one. We're getting back into the story, which, you know, we should be because there's only one fucking episode left. So. I like it. I think it got a little wobbly on how we got to all the locations we go to. I'm not going to spoil what happens, but there's a lot of setting up in this episode. There's some action. There is some story. There's some drama, but I feel like it is a big setup for what's going to happen next week. So I like that, but the initial start is like, okay, lots of stuff is just going really quick, and I don't want to say it feels forced exactly, but it felt a little rushed, and I would say that about the whole episode. The pacing was a little off. It felt like we were rushing to get like next week's the finale, and they knew that. 
So, and I think this one, it proved that there's some episodes that work, but this one really proved that those other episodes, some of them we didn't need. It felt like we could have just picked up from episode three or four and it would have been the exact same thing. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, it's funny because John Favreau in this, it seems like he likes to write the story based ones. And then there's like three episodes like, ah, we'll give that one Filoni. Ah, we'll give that one someone else. So it feels like now I know, like, obviously we see the credits after the episode, but if they were before and if I saw John Favreau, I'd go, oh, I know we're in for some story episodes. So that was good. Um, yeah, there's some really big moments in here, some really fun kind of uh I, I reveals in a sense some kind of twists on certain characters that we've learned about and uh yeah i i really like the episode uh i'm excited for next week but i still feel i wish this came a little earlier because i like the story stuff we've gotten so far and i liked in this episode uh i think it ends in a really good cliffhanger but yeah i wish wish this came a little sooner but i really enjoyed the episode yeah i agree to me this is the best episode yet uh i was a big fan of this one i i you know, it's funny, you, you look back on the other stuff and it's like, I don't know, if you're listening to this for some reason non-spoilers and you haven't lis- watched some of the other episodes, like you could skip episodes five and six if you want and just skip right to this one. Mm-hmm. Maybe even more as, as Travis kind of alluded to, but I think just five and six would be safe. Uh, and I don't know, I, I just, I really, en- I really enjoyed it. Uh, I think there's definitely some things that bug me still, like some little plot things, uh, little questions I have, but... Overall, it was just fun. I feel like it's actually building upon things that other episodes established, which, I mean, is a classic TV show thing that this show hasn't really done because it's mostly just kind of filler episodes in in an order that doesn't really matter a whole lot. Uh, But, yeah, I think it's it's fun to revisit some characters, revisit some places we've been before, and actually progress the story that feels like... I feel like what happens in this episode I thought would have happened in episode two or three, and we're just kind of getting to it now. So, yeah, I mean, as... If you've been listening along the whole way th- through, you know I'm not really haven't really been a big fan of this show overall. I think it's fine, but I think this episode was definitely the standout one so far for me. Even episode one, which is obviously the most plot because that's where you get introduced to everything. But mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, the best episode so far for me. This one was directed by Deborah Chowgan, who yes. did episode three, and she's doing yeah. the Obi Wan show, which again I'm very happy about that because yeah, definitely good hands. Yeah, sure. though I think uh, I don't know if it's my favorite. I have to think, but three and this one are battling for one and two, so I'm just happy that she is has the reins on that show. So I'm excited. Yeah, I agree with uh, everything you guys said. I this is definitely my favorite episode now. Uh, episode four, wh- whatever one did uh, it was for yeah. Regina Carano. That was your Bryce Dallas favorite. Howard. Yeah, that's her name, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that was my favorite episode, but this one topped it. Um, There's just I don't know. It was just got me really excited with what was going on. I do agree there were some pacing issues, just because it felt like they were trying to jam a lot of stuff in there, and mm-hmm. a lot of the stuff that they threw in there, I really liked. But just like the transition from like them getting to each spot, I just was like, okay, I'll just brush it off my shoulder or something. Just, just go with it because I am liking what they're where they're bringing me to. Just not, uh, I don't know, like the execution of the pacing wise. But overall, I really liked this. There was good action in it. There is, like you said, gl- great cliffhanger at the end. It really sets up for the last episode, um, which I feel like you kind of have to do, especially in a show with like your first season. You want to have people looking forward to that very last episode and for the last few episodes leading up to because what number is this seven is seven Mm -hmm. yeah so leading up to seven i feel like they were kind of getting lackluster i was just obviously we were talking about it plus just talking like co-workers and stuff about it they're like yeah i don't don't know too much about the show so when i uh looks like you're stuck with me (laughs) (laughs) yeah exactly but uh no this one i felt like delivered really well on uh just getting everyone hyped on the finale and uh yeah, I'm excited to talk spoilers. Because there, w- there definitely was some things that I was kind of, I don't know. A little I feel like there's actually stuff to spoil on this episode. Oh, big time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So I'll pass it along to uh, this guy, the sketchy looking guy on my left. Watch this be well, Taylor's the least favorite episode. Fighter. <laughs> Filoni Fighter. Was that your review <laughs> that did that? Hmm? Was, was that you that did the review, the Filoni Fighter? Or what was it? No, the phony Filoni. Phony Filoni. Yeah. It's definitely not him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... Yeah, this episode, um, I loved it, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's a good thing. Um, I agree. But that's uh, always a good he's thing. full of tricks, this guy. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just found it to be uh, <clears throat> very entertaining. I loved how we got back into the story, and I wasn't ever, you know, panicked that this would be another filler episode. I was calling it like the last three or the last two are gonna be story. You know, that's what I was telling myself. And well, you're wrong about it being the I last think three. I think it's a fairly blanket statement two. when there's so little episodes. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. 
Those are Taylor's told you so. So he goes for the safe plays, you know. <laughs> you have to safe bets. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but uh, the episode overall, I love seeing it being a good like forty minutes, including credits. That was good, and uh, I. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just I really enjoyed many of the things that they tackled, and I'm happy that we got to see some familiar things kind of pop back into this episode. And overall, it just it was it was very exciting and very thrilling, and it left on a really good cliffhanger that has me wondering. And I like how from this point on, uh, or not this point on, but at this point, several of the episodes that we had that were kind of fillerish, they have kind of come full circle with certain characters and such and kind of like connected back into the story in this sense. And then there's like the one story with like, um, obviously like Tatooine where I feel like that was creating a different story that'll be picked up. I'm assuming probably as a cliffhanger next season, like we were talking about like with Boba Fett or right. whatever like that. So well, one, you know, spoilers, but two, uh, you've changed your tune. Cause you felt, you told me last week they were going to answer that in this season, the, who, who the boots are. We'll get that. They, they but will. But I, I, as I'm saying now, Either I'm I'm not gonna confirm when that happens or what because I hit spoilers. Well, you can't confirm it because you've not. <laughs> yeah, seen you make it sound like you're a scooper. S tier. Um, yeah. But uh, no, I, I think that will be answered in this season still. Okay. Um, I don't think that's the the way they're going to end on that cliffhanger. It's just too minor. I feel like that we'll probably see that as the cliffhanger to the finale mm-hmm. of the series. But uh, yeah, the, these ep- this episode had a good cliffhanger in itself, and it has me wondering because now I was watching the trailer for Mandalorian again, and I was pinpointing, like, scenes that would be in the next episode, and it's really got me excited for what's going to come, so. Yeah, I th- honestly, I think that's a pretty safe bet, because this there's got to be some, some some conclusion to this season, obviously, and I feel like that Boba possibility would be a good thing to do, like, as a, as a cliffhanger for the next one. Obviously, they've already, like, started filming that and whatnot, so clearly they already kind of have a plan of attack, so I think you might be on something there. <laughs> I do want to say shout outs to Amazon for having all the uh, Baby Yoda merch because I pre ordered my Black Series Baby Yoda figure. I'm disappointed. But not available yet. No, not till March. May. Yeah. Is it March or it May? Be, it should be March, I think. Mm, they got the plushes and all that stuff. Yeah, but the thing I don't like about the plushes are they're like plastic heads. They haven't made a full yeah. plush yet, so that's why we're waiting. I want. A I like full a nice plush. plastic head, personally. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anything <laughs> Wake else? up with it in your back. Anything else non spoilers? <laughs> we all seem to like it. All would recommend it. Go anything? watch it. Yeah, recommend. go watch go this watch one. It. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, you three, didn't designate two, a person. One. Geek versus <gasps> symbol. So where do we want to start with this? I have a I have a question, I guess, so I can yeah. start with that. The dude at the end played by John Carlo Esposito. John Carlo Esposito. Um they said his name quickly and you said I think that was what your name your nickname was alluding to. Yeah, what's his name, Taylor? Uh isn't it Moff Gideon? Isn't it Moff Gideon? Yeah. So he's not no. is he like a known character at all? No, no. he's a new Moff, basically like <laughs> So <laughs> So for someone like me who thought Grand Moff <laughs> Harkin was Moff. just the name of a regular dude. No, I guess no, like Moff that's is a like, rank. It's a rank. Yeah. It's not a military rank. Okay. It's a political rank, basically. Oh, so you have you have governors yeah, I mean, that <laughs> basically run the systems, yeah. and they do have military influence. But they're it's like a different equivalent siding compared to military ranks of admirals yeah. and. Uh, so that's a pretty high rank, though, Moff. Moff is, and you have like Grand Moff, which is like up there in the Moff ranking system. Okay, yeah. so Grand Moff is higher. Is a separate name. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's no, a separate name. This guy is not a grandma. John no, Carlo is mom. actually Tarkin's brother. Can't you see the resemblance? They yeah, look identical. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he's just a moth. So just okay. a moth. So that's hilarious. When you said another moth, I thought you meant like, oh, another Carl. No, I thought that was his there's, name. There's lots of <laughs> moths, and then yeah, that's like another Luke being in this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did you have anything you wanted to go on that, or because I had a I, question? I was just curious on uh, because I thought I heard moth as well, so I was kind of yeah, curious no, what you, that meant. You heard so right. So, so that answers I, my question. I want to get into so obviously like I guess we're starting at the end, but you get Baby Yoda. They bring well, they think it's Baby Yoda there. They kill Warner Herzog, which I love. There's that one moment where. He's like, let's see the baby. And then, like, I was sleeping. Oh, I'll we'll be very quiet. He was such a weird, <laughs> kooky character. I'm going to miss him. I'm kind of disappointed he's dead. What that kind of bugged me a bit because it's like, well, wouldn't they, didn't they think about that? That he would ask to see the baby and, like, yeah, and then insist on yeah. seeing the baby? They still continue to. I know they, they made that plan, like, in haste. So yeah, it kind of makes sense that there'd be some, mm-hmm. some things they overlook or maybe they just thought they'd get lucky or they would just figure it out on the floor. Well, their plan was that it wouldn't come to that, that they would kill this uh, this guy and then they would basically tell the stormtroopers, okay, your paychecks are cut. Well, you why, want a new job. Yeah, but then why hadn't Mando, like, undone his bracers earlier in that conversation? Like, 
They're waiting for right. the right moment. They needed right? the right moment because he was right the on. Only them. One well, shot. that's what I'm saying. Like, why? Th- th- that's just poorly planned out. Because wouldn't he ask that like first? Wouldn't that be like the first thing on his agenda? Is I want to see the baby. Yeah, I thought that was pretty risky, but that's classic. Just I thought it was more like yeah. they wanted Mando to just, just like. I, don't I know, think they want both punish him first of all. Yeah, and yeah. then they're like, w- when they try and punish me, I'll just take yeah. him out. Don't get me wrong. Like it's not a. It's not a plot hole. It just irked me a bit. I have a couple. It's not. It's not a perfect plan. Most of my problem with this episode is like a little irk. Irking, Irklings. The Irklings. Which is good. That's what it should have been co- yeah. called. Episode 7. The Irk. That's 8, actually. <laughs> Irklings. Moff Irk. Revenge yeah, yeah. of the Irk. <laughs> I wanted to throw to Mr. Cannon over there, Taylor Field. So we had Warner Herzog with all his dirty stormtroopers. Dirty. But then with they were Moff, dirty. Uh, with Moff Gideon, he shows up, TIE Fighter, the whole shebang, and then he has Death Troopers with him, and he has clean-looking stormtroopers. What did you take about that? Because clearly I kind of thought that all the stormtroopers were going to be looking down out. But these guys are looking Return of the Jedi... You know, not first order because they got the redesign, but they're all looking nice and shiny, like the Empire's still going on. So, what did you take from that? When you say what do I, what did I take? What are you implying well, exactly? Well, <laughs> what do you, why, like, why does like why, what are my thoughts on because it? Or? So this is supposed to be what three or five years later from Return five. Jedi. Five. So to me, them showing all the stormtroopers looking down, Tron was like they're on the run, right? And we've kind of heard that Favreau said it's like Nazis, where some were scattered and they ran away. But uh, Gideon's, I'm just going to call him Esposito, when he shows up, he looks like they're fully functioning, still well, Empire. Isn't the obvious answer that the, other, the storm, the dirty ones were like living on the sand planet? I guess that's it. But then the also ones came from like a, well, not a Star Destroyer. I don't know where the fuck. But the reason from, why I think there could be something different is because they killed all the stormtroopers and Warner Herzog, who you would assume would have been working with them. Right. So is there a different faction of stormtrooper? Bad guys, because why did they kill all those stormtroopers no, and Warner Herzog? They probably just saw them as disposable. Her- Herzog communicated with him and was, you know, they were obviously on the same side. Yeah. I think it was Herzog's incompetence, and I think mm. the Empire doesn't care about each other. It doesn't care about its, you know, subordinates or anything like that. It'll execute. And in this situation, he wanted to take everyone out in that room, and it was worth the sacrifice to, for the Moff Gideon to get Baby Avocado. And this is where maybe we won't learn, but you said the Empire. But who is running this? Like, who is the main head on show? Uh, that we don't know. I'm yeah. a s- my my money right now. Like, obviously Herzog. I never put him as being the head honcho. No, From the but trailers. I, I always assumed up. it was Moff Gideon. So, and I still have my money on Moff Gideon being like the in I don't control th- you of this. Think, like the top guy that's running all this. I would say so because really? other than that, there's there's not I don't many think he other would go down there. No, no. I don't think I so either. I think he's like second or third in command. I think there has to be somebody else. It depends because then he I would send someone to do his mission. That he's yeah, it's a risky doing. move. But Unless they don't have the resources for that. I don't know. <laughs> It's hard to say because there's not. It's not like there's a lot of um, imperial, uh, high-ranking of officials out there that would probably take charge. Most of them, I'm assuming, were killed off or taken uh, prisoner and mm-hmm. such. And in this case, you have yeah Moff Gideon, who is probably so good at what he does because of um, obviously the fact that you see his troopers in shape when that imperial tank came out. Which shoutouts to Star Wars Rebels, by the way, that was cool. But that tank came out. The um, uh, Platoon of stormtroopers came off. Everyone looked in like good condition and stuff. It goes to show that this guy is very smart. He knows how to take care of his men, and he knows how to keep things efficient and um, consistent. What <laughs> you said, take care of his men, and Kirkland just smiled over there. I'm just thinking of something <laughs> funny. <laughs> Cleaning, Cleaning the pipes. Yeah. <laughs> Come here. I got a. I got a question. Yeah. So how? What's the time? Like, what's the time frame from uh, episode six to episode seven? I'd probably say maybe a couple days. They never say. They I sorry, say sorry, sorry. I meant to say days. like episode one, like Return of the Jedi Return to Force movies. Awakens. Oh, yeah. oh that's what I meant to say. Thirty years. <laughs> thirty years. Okay, so this is five years after episode six. Mm-hmm. So there's so twenty five years before okay. First Order. So that, that, that's quite a bit of time. Yeah, I, yeah. I was thinking like, well, <laughs> like who, obviously they went from the Empire to the First Order, but I just wasn't sure. Like next episode, right. Snoke. Just yeah, shows exactly. Up. So <laughs> Hi, I, Mandalorian. I, I wanted to clarify. Baby Yoda is Snoke. This is another <laughs> thing too. Possible. Like, and I, I know you're gonna say Jakku didn't happen or whatever, but I mean, when you when <laughs> you happen. when you take into account too that that battle happened. Probably what, what battle happened? Jakku. When did that happen in the movies? <laughs> uh, yeah, it did. It happened Continue. 25 years before Force Awakens. <laughs> as they specify. Continue. It did happen. We just didn't. Um, see it. But. If you look at the fact that that probably had that was the last stand of the empire, and mm-hmm. they obviously had like lots of high-ranking officials, and most of those officials they lost, so they were probably gone into whatever them. 
Um, this is probably around that time frame, so I that's why again I don't think there's going to be anyone higher ranking up there that'll be taking in charge. The only reason why I think there's someone higher ranking is because I think there's a chance Gideon might not make it out of the finale, and I feel like they're not going to drop this like Rogue Empire storyline just right. yet. I think they'll answer questions about Yoda and taper the storyline off and maybe leave some loose ends, but I don't think they'll fully shut this down. I think having the Mandalorian always on the run is a good idea because if he kills these Empire people and there's no problem, then the next episode should end with Baby Yoda going back to that colony and everything being fine, right? I think they're going to find a reason for Baby Yoda to be with them all the time. So mm-hmm. that's why I don't I don't think he's the fully highest. Maybe he survives. I mean, maybe like a Grand Emerald Thrawn maybe in no, there? No, I don't. I, don't. I, I would hope for you. That would be great. But I just think there could just be some other juicy actor next season that gets cast, you know, mm-hmm. like, uh, I don't know. I was going to say Mads Mikkelsen. But John Goodman comes in and he's like an empire, you know, guy, Shout something like John that. Goodman. So <laughs> that's what I think. I don't think he's the top guy, but I was, I'm still wondering about the rankings and whatnot, if we're going to get that answered. And I just think next week, unless the episode is like an hour, I don't know. I think next week's going to be pretty action heavy. I think yeah. it's going to be more about escaping this planet again. Yeah. Which is, so so right. we don't, in terms of current canon, because the books have been burned, uh, just like the Jedi Temple, mm-hmm. uh, the do we have tragedy? What kind of canon do we have in between episode six and seven? Do we have anything else, like any of the shows, any of the animated shows to go off? No, of, my, well, there's, there's resistance, resistance but, but don't worry about that's that one. R- that's <laughs> that probably animated during, show? yeah, it's during Force Awakens, I think, and like during uh, between Last Jedi and episode so nine. Don't, there's been a few. I guess books my, my main question is, do it. we have anything on like the info of? And like any sort of empire info in that time period. The, yeah, to go there, off of? there's a bit because like w- it depends what exactly you want to know because there are certain things that I yeah. know. Well, that I think happen. I'm curious on like the same route that Travis is there. Like, well, how high up is this guy? And like, if he does die next episode, what are the implications of that? Mm-hmm. I feel like because if the Mandalorian's killing like the top dog, then I feel like that's kind of weird, right? It kind of throw like obviously it's a weird time for the empire because it's at, like they're one of the weakest times, I guess. But it just feels like that's way too big of a a kill to make for the scale of this show. So when he's going around, I, w- like I would say, yes, I feel like, and the reason I think he isn't in, ch- in charge is because at this point, yes, he's probably very careful about his moves and his decisions, but I feel like in this certain situation, he doesn't know how many people are probably in there. And he feels very confident that he has this on lockdown because that's the thing. And the downfall with the empire is mm-hmm. they're very overconfident and him coming in like that is yeah. probably just to make a statement. And, uh, He's flexing his strength and control of the situation. Yeah. And he knows, too, that he has the avocado because they got the transmissions. You know, they could hear it over the comm. So he knows that they have avocado. Mm-hmm. And he knows that he holds all the cards now. And he knows that they're not going to do anything for whatever the reason because he's got what he wants. Yeah, so he could just go and leave. So why did he need to come down at all? Uh, Couldn't he have done I, the yeah. same thing with that hologram? Like just send a hologram to, to talk or something? Because he like didn't get avocado like the other, what are those those troopers called? Those scout troopers. troopers. Scout troopers. Yeah, they just they went and got him pretty easily. Pretty yeah, mm-hmm. like I feel like for what he was saying, it was as if like he thought Mando had like the avocado. Was, you know that's in there, yeah. yeah. That is that is possible. Wh- why not just blow up the entire building? Like from his point of view, I just feel like that's be yeah, so simple because you don't need the man no really. that, you don't need to have yeah, that dialogue and he clearly with doesn't care if there's extra stormtroopers yeah there <laughs> to save their lives that that is true and it is possible that they were trying to misdirect us which i'd totally be fine with i, I that would be pretty cool if he does think that you know it's in there still and yeah. that's how they figure out their way out of there or yeah I, I i took it that way because of like i said like what he was saying and the way he was saying it and the fact that he just was like speaking to them like in there plus um like the scout troopers didn't go looking until they kind of like it, I don't really know how it happened, but they kind of just intercepted like the message uh, that Mando was sending to Quill, mm-hmm. and then that's when they're like, "Oh, let's just go." You'd think that they'd be like, "Hey, Moff, we're gonna go. <laughs> we we found him. We're we gonna. Him. We're, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's just like, ah, let's just go do this ourselves. Mm-hmm. Maybe we'll get a reward. Mm-hmm. But then maybe <laughs> that could start off the action for next week that he gets the call and then Mando and Team Field they yeah. need to like strike out and go get it because they they are gonna bust out of there. I don't think anyone of note's gonna die. Maybe. Carl Weathers, but he's directing some episodes next season, so I think he's gonna make it out too. So I think I th- I think there'll be something, or the scout troopers just show up and everyone's dead, and it's like oh, well, <laughs> but yeah, I, I hope there's something with the caller, something like that. So, mm-hmm. but I mean, you also just kind of had a good guy die. What did you guys think about that? Very sad. Qual- about that. Quill, what's his name? Quill. Quill. Yeah. Do we know for sure he's dead though? I think he I don't know. Dead. He looked pretty <laughs> dead. He looked pretty He's smoky, a small guy, though. He doesn't look a like a highly defensible life form. That is true. 
I like it for a few reasons. One, I like the character, but I also think that judging by the route they're going with him, he's like, I want to stay yeah. retired on this planet. He's just helping out because Mando's a friend. I don't think there is much with this character. We got, we mm-hmm. even debated it when we saw him last. Like, will we ever see him again? So it's like, if we would have saw him again, I felt like it would have been seasons yeah. from now or something like that. So I don't think there's anything to do. And then I think it also adds stakes because that's the fun thing. I like that this is a prequel, but it's prequel when we have 30 years. So... By the end of the series, all these characters, Baby Yoda, Mando, Dunes, they could all be dead. So that's what I like that it's yeah. we're not in this box. So I like that it showed, oh, this is getting serious. He's dead. And I think it raised the stakes of the show that now mm-hmm. anyone could die. Yeah. Uh, except for IG Legend. I, I think it was really back. successful with the kind of tension of it as well. Because most mm-hmm. times in those kind of scenes, the classic thing is it gets in the door. The door closes just in time and he yeah. blasts off and he's all safe. But... Yeah, I thought that I thought the tension was good, even though we haven't seen that character since episode two. Three. Is it or one? Wasn't it three? Three. Yeah. What happens in episode three again? Jawas. Isn't that no, no, episode? that's episode two. Episode three is with the no, Mandalorians. Ep- is it episode escapes. two? Yeah. Cause epi- yeah, because episode three is is already the uh, is the episode. Yeah, where all the dudes are shooting at him. Oh, he breaks into the. Uh, yeah, he goes night yeah. ops. Yeah. So we haven't seen him since episode two, and he really doesn't have all that much screen time in the first place, but. I still feel like there's an attachment there, even though I've been a little bit checked out of this whole season. So I guess that's just uh, credit to how they shot the scene mm-hmm. and that there was some tension to it and it was interesting. And I don't know, I guess I didn't really expect it. So maybe there's a little bit of yeah, I didn't weight think they in would that. Him, yeah. Even though it really doesn't matter a whole lot. Like, I don't know, we're not too invested in the characters. So it's not a big loss necessarily. But yeah, I thought that was a, a good choice to do. But yeah, it makes me curious now what they're going to do in the last episode because if they remove him well the only other person that we really care about would be Kara Dune yeah uh, so I are think they she'll make get, it yeah like would they get rid of two like the only two other characters in the show like back to back that'd be a little harsh I feel like yeah no I think she'll make because I feel like them introducing her again and then reintroducing IG-11 back I think that that's going to be like a little crew next year and which I think will maybe actually help the show really so IG-11 even yeah, with Mando's like aversion to bots, I, I think he's gonna pop off and save them next episode, and yeah. he's gonna okay. kind of gain some loyalty. And I think we'll get. I'm hoping we'll get one more flashback. You know, oh, we will. It's and I think it's, it's gonna up. full on show like obviously who saved them, and it's gonna further. We already know why he hates droids, but I think I think we're gonna get one more. If not, I'd be very i'd be very it end, guard. that I ended on a cliffhanger a you know in itself that flashback yeah. like it just someone opens the thing yeah who so is i it, imagine right? we will and i'm betting on it being jedi you know that jedi is going to be in there it's gonna be so good Interesting. i think it will be yeah but yeah cool um w- w- quill yeah so his mm-hmm. death um yeah i was obviously it was just a big shocker moment i was not expecting that um kind of when they're all coming together ig11 caradoon and uh quill um, I was just thinking to myself, like, man, this is kind of the team up that I was wanting from like last episode. Because last episode mm-hmm. they had they had one, but it was just like an assortment of just like characters that obviously would not like go well together. Like they're constantly just like bickering and fighting, mm-hmm. and then obviously we saw what happened. They just ended up like turning on Mando. But this one is just like, all oh, right, I, I like all these characters. IG Eleven, um, reprogrammed. So I I liked that character for what we got in the first episode, but it would be interesting to see him just like reprogrammed as a new individual. It's learning to I see when he's like trying to learn how to walk again. Yeah, that stuff was really. I cool. I, I really like those segments of just basically like teaching him how to live and walk and do these little tasks. It was funny when he dropped the box and just crushed that mm-hmm. one creature, and then he like kind of moves it and like kicks it away mm-hmm. with his foot. I really um, like that scene. <laughs> yeah, but uh, so I was re- I was like, okay, this is gonna be cool. They got their IG Eleven Caradoon, and then like I just assumed Quill would be like the guy that like works on gadgets and stuff mm-hmm. like just like not necessarily on the ground like a foot soldier but just like the guy in the ship that kind of is mm-hmm. like yeah i don't know the guy in the chair you could call him right. um so i was definitely like surprised um especially since he was just had so much faith in ig11 i just assumed that he would get to the ship ig11 would come out and just pop off on the scout troopers so when i saw baby yoda there I was just like, okay, he must have like, I don't know. Tried to bait them. Yeah, exactly. Know. But then, and then obviously they just grab it and then you see him just like smoldering. I'm like, holy shit. I can't believe they went that route. Cause like Travis said, it adds stakes to the show. Mm-hmm. It's like, man, like these new characters that we're starting to like, they could die. Right. Mm-hmm. But they are, they're all disposable. Really. They're all disposable. The like, the that's show, the word yeah. I was looking for. So, uh, yeah, like overall for the health of the show, I thought it was a really good decision. Cause it's not just like, oh, well, 
it, it's baby Yoda will feel good at the end of the day everyone's like the good guys are gonna win it's like holy shit what's actually gonna happen so yeah. overall I was really happy with it nice. yeah and it shows to me that yeah Mando can luck himself out of a lot of things mm-hmm. but this is one thing as of right now he can't hopefully yeah. nothing happens next se- or next episode and I like the bait switch that they set up that Quill knew a b- more about the baby Yoda yeah. or he said more about the Empire because he had dealings with them and then they killed them all yeah. I joked to Taylor I said oh that's because they don't have the answers right now but still that was a good way because when they, he said that you're like oh this is how we're going to get those answers and then he's totally. dead. like well right. now Mando is still in the in the mystery right because I, I, I still question how much we're going to find out next week exactly about the baby yoda or the avocado so i i think that's still gonna weigh a little while so i think that was a, like i said a fun bait and switch yeah. oh you're gonna get this info no he's dead sorry it's, it's interesting because uh moff what was his name moff gideon. Gideon. gideon moff gideon he was like implying that like he really knows like baby avocado and like i don't know i, I can't i wouldn't say he knows his origins but he just says it's important to me and i know of him so I, I feel like we'll get some answers there. In the mm-hmm. finale. I also hard prediction. I don't think he's gonna die this season. Muff Gideon. I think he's gonna live on to yeah. the next season. Yeah. I'll I'll live with you on that one. All right, yeah. let's go. Mm. The Gideon boys. <laughs> the Gideon boys. That's a tough what one. You Taylor, think? you're in the same camp as them. Oh yeah, he'll live. Survive. Oh yeah, he'll live. Hundred okay. percent. So Travis, you can be the yeah, contrarian. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, for fun. I'll fun. I'll say he'll die just because I think. I, I, I all th- it all to me depends on if we get that boot reveal or not because I think if they reveal it this season then I think oh that sets up your next big bad if it's a boba or even some people have been throwing out Cad Bane which I didn't even think about why it couldn't Who? be Cad Bane I had thought of it but at the same Who? time I I don't know I why not it's, it's set the stage he is a alien bounty hunter that is actually one of the coolest characters in Clone Wars he's hmm. he's a really well done character I think so he's, he's blue a he has Duros. a cowboy hat. He's like Filoni, you know, but why do you, Duros. why do you not think it could be Cat Bane? Cause I think, species. I think that would be less dangerous than playing with Boba, who's a legacy character. You bring Cat Bane, who's never been live action. You got the Filoni it's, tie. It's not that I, like, I, I, it's not that I'm against it or anything like that. Just when I, when I was watching that scene and when we talked about it, Boba Fett made the most sense. I hadn't even thought of Cat Cause Bane. Cause Tatooine and everything. Cause Tatooine yeah. and everything. Yeah. But that being said, like if they, if it wasn't Boba Fett and it was Cat Bane, like a hundred percent, would I be hyped to see him live action? Because he he's such a cool character, yeah. and he's just he's got this kind of aesthetic God, atmosphere Robert. about him, and he's just um like we just we had more of him in the Clone Wars retrospective, and he's just he always brings something new mm-hmm. to the table. Do you think that could still persona. have a big impact on your Kirklands, your Dylans of the world who don't know who he is? I, I well I, if I you get to learn yeah, about him as retroactively, it goes. but I don't think on I don't think like first episode you'd be like wow Cat Bane I yeah. think that's that's for the canon boys yeah. and girls yeah. you know but yeah. I do think th- so that's my prediction I think it's one or the other I think either Esposito lives and we don't get that boot reveal or if we get the boot reveal Esposito's a goner yeah and I think it'd be in different orders but I because I, I don't I I'm just trying to think how to get out of this situation without. Esposito or Mando being alive or dying. I guess you could just escape, but I feel like they're going to have to really kill yeah. all these people to get out of there. So I was, I was going to say yeah. maybe Esposito just gets like a uh, Harvey Dent scar or something. He just yeah. always has a mark and remember him. Or they Mando. might do a, <laughs> I could see a thing where they leave his fate in question where mm-hmm. like a ship gets taken out, he crashes, but we don't see an explode or something yeah. like that. So it's like he could come back, he could right. be alive. So I could see something like that. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'll, I'll, like I said, I'll play Devil's Advocate. I'll say he'll die just yeah. to, you know, give something. Because maybe once yeah. Mando finds out that Quill's dead, Mando's really mad. Yeah. Uh, here's another prediction episode thing I want. Does his helmet come off next episode because of the finale? Mm. I I had... Nah. No? Nah. I had inclinations it might have came off this episode. It, it I was, thought it was, it was funny little come, banter yeah. with that scout trooper. Mm-hmm. He's like, 20 credits for the helmet. Yeah. <laughs> um... Okay. Going into the show, like before I saw the first episode, I'm like, oh, we're probably going to get the helmet reveal, like second episode or something. Mm-hmm. I was so wrong on that. <laughs> but uh, that was me, season one of Daredevil, just wanting the cost. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say no, just because yeah. I was so sure that it would come off early. But um, just th- throughout the show, I don't know. It, it's not convincing me that, that it would come off. I, I feel like, th- like, whether it's season two, three, however long the show goes on, I feel like we will see his face at one point, but I don't yeah. think it's this season. Taylor, helmet off. I think you save that for like a series finale. I don't think a you just series finale. Series finale. <laughs> uh, no I don't way. Think, I don't think you just drop that as the finale of a season. 
<laughs> Serious. Yeah, I think it would drop it like the <laughs> yeah. season, like whenever the show ends after like season two or something. Drop it like Master Chief. They just wait until like. Yeah, I don't. I don't forever. see. They've built up such like mis- mystery and like um, an identity of this character without having the mask or without having the helmet on. And as soon as we take that helmet off, it's gonna change our perspective of the character but and how we feel like about a twilight or something here's the because <laughs> some people <laughs> have said like oh once the helmet's off it's pedro i think the helmet can come off and can easily put that back on so the stunt guy can do I all don't, the work i don't think, I don't so, think so because it's it, we've right? we've right. gone through almost a whole season now literally of him with the helmet on and got to learn it and adapt to that character it's like growing with darth vader the whole time like we have and then you know it has meaning at the end when he the helmet finally comes off at the end of you know his story arc and i feel like they do the same thing with the mandalorian right because if we get to see that helmet off in his face midway maybe a back shot kind of like the as you said we got on the panza sorgon planet where he takes off the helmet and uh it's kind of like a feels like a darth vader kind of moment where the helmet's off and uh you don't see see them but it's mm-hmm. just the helmet's off i feel like mm-hmm. they've done that and we will get the helmet off at the conclusion of his story, I my, feel like. My counter, clearly we haven't seen the movie, that's tomorrow, but Kylo at one point lost his mask, and now all of a sudden he has a mask again. So that's why it's it can't happen in Star Wars that it could come off. I'm not even saying it gets taken off. Like, yeah. I could see Esposito taking it off as like a way to disrespect him or something like that. Like What happened if they got him all cuffed up and he takes his face? Because here's my prediction again. I think it happens if we get that flashback next week. Because I think if they're showing how he was saved and they're getting mm. more into... like personal stuff i think it will come off and i also think because it's been revealed that pedro pascal has rarely actually been on set for this show it's mostly a stunt guy he does voice acting yeah but he was on set a few times in season one why would he be on set if the most of the season like bryce Dallas howard said she never met pedro pascal the whole time shooting <laughs> so i think if he was on set See, that's interesting because yeah. to me I, al- I almost think if they were going to have a face reveal the only thing that makes sense for me right now, mm-hmm. other than like something where yeah he like the enemy it takes comes, it yeah, off, yeah. would be if he goes back to that whatever win- wooded planet. You just named it, Sorgan. Sorgan Sor- goes back Sorgan. to Sorgan and then has that interaction with that uh, the lady, the lady there again. Ooh. However, I feel like if they were gonna film that, they would have filmed that during that episode with Bryce Dallas Howard, mm. even though sh- like. Mm. Technically, that'd be an episode of someone else. Obviously, they're not, not going to just use that set once and then use it for like one more scene at the very end. Like they'd film that at the same time. Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe that's like a weird conspiracy theory. But it's a detective eye on so it. I, I expect. Yeah. That. So I guess like that's what I was saying. Well, that has to be how he reveals his face. It has to be some big emotional moment where he takes it off in front of her. But I don't think that's really going to happen at and this point. That's if what Bryce Dallas Howard is to be believed. Yeah. Ooh. And that's he why I'm ruse to me. That's here. why I'll go with <laughs> yes. And that's why I go with there's a chance that the enemy takes it off. Because I thought in this series he would take it off because he'd have a problem with the Mandalorians. But they saved him and he seems really high in that culture. So that's why I think I'll get taken off as like an insult mm-hmm. to him. Like, screw you for bugging yeah. us with this baby avocado and everything. So I'll be the contrary again. And I go, yes, I think next week we're, we're going to see Pedro's face. Even if it's for a split second, I think we're going to see... That uh, I want to see it. Heart throb, so. I want to see it. It's just I don't. I don't think it would be. Yeah. And ki- kind of running the same lines that you said of uh, like he kind of, I don't know, is not in the best faith with the Mandalorians. Like that's why he would have taken it off. Mm. I don't know. Just going into the show, I I didn't realize like how how much of like a culture and like importance it is the helmet to like the Mandalorians. Yeah. So I think that's when I was making my predictions. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna see Pedro's face like two episodes in. But mm-hmm. like just now that we're basically at the tail end of this season I, i'm now understanding like the importance of it it's just like oh, okay it's a lot more important than just seeing an actor's face or getting that mm-hmm. emotional scene yeah because like i said in the past pedro pascal is a great actor and like for an emotional scene he can sell it just on like his yeah. his i don't know what you'd call that his face <laughs> i guess yeah, yeah. His, his facial acting um so I, I was just assuming we were gonna get some of that but and no. I do, I don't know, maybe it's because I just like the surrounding material of this episode more than the other ones, but I felt like this one was the best of, like, the intonation of his voice and stuff like that. I felt like it was more emotional. I felt like he was worried. I felt like he was scared about what was yeah. going to happen. I he was, like, out of his stuff. Yeah, yeah I felt like he was out of his stuff. comfort zone, and I, I, I like that. So I think that just proves to me that you don't really need that, like no. you're saying. And then, yeah. like, people are just going to want it at that point, or they're, they're going to have that vision in their head where I think it's good to keep that mystery, you know, if, Video games yeah. or anything to be believed. Your Master Chiefs, your Sam says you don't need to have that face revealed to like feel connection to a character. Just so. picking up, picking back on what you said of like the different types of uh, 
I don't know, ways he was talking, like whether he's worried or there was even some like joking around when he was arm wrestling with uh, Cara Dune there. I don't know mm-hmm. if you want to jump on that scene now. That, that I was w- going to go to Baby Yoda X because yeah. we haven't talked about that. that was, there's uh, some big stuff happening there. I, I was very like indifferent on that one when he pulled out the force choke. Really? On that. Because I, I don't know, just thinking back to when we were talking about how uh, in Force Awakens, we, we thought, or I, I shouldn't say we, Travis, you were saying how uh, Kylo Ren couldn't actually do the Force choke because he wasn't powerful enough or whatever. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. might have just been a, I don't know, prediction. You could probably clarify. Well, I uh, I hate canon because because <laughs> <laughs> in the movies, to me, the dark side, like, choking has always been like a dark side yeah. thing. And even Luke uses in Return of the Jedi, he's tapping into that. Mm-hmm. But then in canon, they show like, oh, Anakin did it a few times before he like choked Padme. Okay. So it's this like muddled thing now. But in my head, canon, it was always like, that was something you have to unlock. But clearly this baby Yoda is just like, Jesus Christ reincarnated because <laughs> he can just, he is maybe like, I don't think he's Yoda reincarnated, but he is just that. He seems to have all the powers and whatnot. And again, I don't think anyone can say anything about the Ray thing because like, the the power thing maybe, but him actually choking someone, I feel like you have to be pretty cognizant to use that specific power to stop somebody. It's, so you know, it's at, at this point in time, you you could put a gun in a baby's hand and it doesn't know that it's a weapon. It doesn't know that if it shoots, if it sees, you know, one person who is causing uh, harm, maybe in a playful way to someone that it, it really really cares about, it could sh- end up pulled it like throwing this thing or shooting it at the person, and it wouldn't know what it did. And I feel like this baby Yoda or avocado in the sense doesn't know that. Sorry. It's hard. I, I love that you always correct it. Yeah, like you you can just go ahead with it. We you, all know what you're talking yeah, about. No, but you, 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 for your sake, you, you re- I know you made a state of saying, you know, let's call avocado to yeah, make but it then easier for you. Some people say baby Yoda. Some of us even say baby avocado. So <laughs> it's just, I it's do it out of respect. It's about his model that is this fucking can <laughs> adolescent show. avocado. I do it out of respect for you because I know it well, can I, be confusing. I respect that. <laughs> But, oh, what were um, you? Uh, what were I was, you gonna I was going to say, I just think that it, he didn't know exactly the full consequence of what he was doing. And yes, you do say like it is tapping to the dark side. But at the same time, I think the, the force is something you can you can use the force for basically so many different variations of things. And it's looked upon, yes, as using force choke as being uh, tapping into the dark side as being a dark thing. But in that sense, I still think it's equivalent to this um, avocado didn't fully know what it was well, doing. He just that- saw... It, and that's yeah, my no, thing, yeah, yeah. and that's where I don't know if it's Kirkland's problem too. I think he should have maybe just pushed her again because I think you're right with the baby and the gun yeah. comparison. But then this is to me now the baby taking and like putting a scope on the gun. Yeah, being like, I can do this. I agree, and maybe yeah, yeah I, he could be learning this and that. But it's just because it's in such a small yeah. time zone. I don't know. I don't buy it oh. as like it was a cool moment because right you're like man he's choking this chick. Like I don't yeah it's a I big don't moment. hate the moment, but I am like okay what is the logistics? I, guess, I think but, I see it more in like the Incredibles like Jack Jack scenario where. Yeah. It's a, just a baby that has like all sorts of possibilities and hasn't isn't really aligned anywhere yet. Jack Jack doesn't have a power determined yet. Mm-hmm. Baby Yoda doesn't really have a side. Doesn't even know the concept of sides yet. So it's just like using this natural defense thing, like you're like you're saying, Taylor. So yeah, yeah that's a good point. And yeah. uh, I basically agree with everything that Travis just said. How like I I and you, Taylor, about saying like, but not me. He does. <laughs> <laughs> don't single yourself out like that <laughs> everyone's 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 doing good everyone's opinion is important here <laughs> so i i 100 agree with you where avocado doesn't know what he's doing like to the full extent like he doesn't know like i'm i could potentially murder someone i'm like he he's like just from protecting his point, mando. he's just protecting mando and but i totally agree with what travis said how i feel like he should have just like pushed her or something because we we've seen him i guess kind of levitate like something before with the force but this is like i want you to stop what you're doing where i like I'm going to I'm going to stop her. the oxygen that's going to your body. Yeah. I'm going to as- asphyxiate you. Like I just feel like if this is supposed to be a baby like fuck like Kylo Ren wasn't even doing that for the longest time, let alone I don't know, this that's little But then so it's going to so be the species is so powerful, Yeah, right? and no, like, but, but that's that's <laughs> how does he even know like how someone is breathing properly? Like I I, I I don't know. That that was just a big irk that I had with that scene. It's it's you know, when you say the species thing, it is it is true because every single member of the species that we've seen has the ability of using the force, you know, and even they say in this episode that they it's not genetically altered, but they've evolved to this point in their lifespan where they are very powerful in what they do. 
and this is one of the most powerful Force users uh, in the galaxy that we have seen. Th- and that yes, is Yoda new to was this show, though, because with Yoda and Yaddle, they were grown up, right? So we could have just assumed that, oh, they learned the Force. and Because the same thing is, yeah, we see two Yodas, but every main character has been a human. So you mm-hmm. can make the same case like, oh, humans are really strong with the Force, right? This is the first time we're seeing yeah. someone of this. But have we, like, ever, have we also ever seen a literal baby using the Force before? Not a baby, but we've seen like <laughs> what a younglings. Question. We've seen younglings like use the force. <laughs> well, and stuff yeah, like I know. That. Seen, I know we've seen fucking younglings. <laughs> I saw what Anakin did. But I'm asking like babies, babies who have like very few concepts of like what they're doing. Where I think Kirkland um, makes a good point. How would the baby know what it's choking? I also think the baby just had that's no probably idea. That's more like a Clone someone. Wars thing. And I think, I well, think. I don't think we've ever seen it. I think the only thing is, like, to shout out the new trilogy is just, I feel like Luke insinuated a lot that Ben was really powerful when he was young, but they don't put an age on that. So is that young like everybody else? Or that was like, yeah, he oh, wasn't when like he was a force ba- choking Leia. Yeah, yeah, or was that when he was a baby, everything was levitating? And they're like, oh, he's definitely a Jedi. So it's like, we've yeah. never seen anything like a baby, baby, like, in as far as I'd say what I've seen in cartoons and in movie canon. So, and I guess that's the other cheat too is people could say well technically he's 50 years old right so the species is different so it's like yeah, to yeah. them it's like a baby but it's still that's 50 years yeah. I don't know it's a it's a gray area I would leave it I would leave it mostly up to like your own interpretation I think so yeah yeah I mean it's I for now those, yeah, it's all yeah. For, for now yeah I don't have answers on that or anything wow. but like that's why people come to our podcast either yeah, yeah, for yeah. they the need answers. your answer <laughs> you have, your phone only, you have his phone number you know you should text him right now <laughs> okay, you do yeah. it. Like you, user Taylor, Taylor just picked up his phone and shaked it. I don't know if that's how you text. Add, uh, it didn't bother me like it did for you, but I totally understand why it bugged you. The yeah. thing that bugged me in that scene is that Kara Dune like backs up and she's like, Oh, it almost killed me. And, yeah. And I feel like <laughs> I feel like that was like a massive like Over exaggeration. Yeah. <laughs> like I don't know. I mean if you're in a scenario where obviously you probably have never seen a Jedi or anything like that, but and the all way, of a sudden No, but the way she said it was like she was in and within one second of her, oh death, yeah, she was in inches of her. She almost line. flatlined. Yeah, like <laughs> I, I get it. It hurt. I think it, it, it was pretty unprecedented. I'm in your but camp, like, though. Yeah, like come I don't on. Know. I, I like, get what she was saying though, because it's like, let's say you're standing here, and let's say James Gunn got fired from Guardians, and Batista was in the room, and he started choking you, and he's so powerful. You could have said like, oh, his power, like that could have killed me if he kept choking me. That's the way I took it. Like yeah. she's not an inch from death, just like that was so powerful it could have killed me. Like that's how I took it. And she's in a position where she doesn't know what's going on and doesn't know how to make this thing stop. She can't do anything to mm-hmm. stop it. She's just being choked by the force. So just a little baby yeah. force choking. I think yeah. I think it's just one of those things where it's like, really, if you think about it, at the end of the day, anyone who's ever been force choked. Is just someone who's acting what it would be like to them to be force choked, and maybe to her it was much more dramatic than what it looked like. Give us your best screen. force choke. I'm not gonna do that right now. Travis, I'll, do, I'll it. do it after I see that actor. Kylo oh, and Ray yeah. scene tomorrow night. Hey-o. Travis is doing. Oh yeah, he's being force choked. All right. He looks like he's thinking about something. <laughs> he's looking like a. Tom- <laughs> he's looking like a tomato. <laughs> thinking about that Raylo scene in Rise of Skywalker. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm alive. You look satisfied more oh, than wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Choke me harder, Daddy. Um, um, yeah, you choking. yeah, just one last thing on like the choking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the force choking, I should say. Uh, those pipes, baby. I just, I mean, from a show standpoint, I kind of understand why they would choose force choke because I feel like that's so related to just the dark side, and then they're trying to like show that this creature. Um, like it has the potential for good and evil. Yeah, so right away. It's yeah. Like, oh no. So like as a as a show, I totally understand that. But like, I don't know. I just feel like like that's so tied to like Darth Vader in my eyes, and then I guess like Kylo Ren, who's like a Vader wannabe right mm-hmm. now. So I I don't know. I was just like, come on, man. Like a baby, to, really. To piggyback on what you're saying, like I like how they set it up where you think, oh, he's gonna force push and make him win at the arm wrestle, but then they that's completely th- yeah, turn yeah. around. Cool. Yeah. And yeah. I love again that it was a force choke scene because it does go to show how. We, all we've had are cute, funny moments with this uh, avocado, and yeah. that's all great and all, but you have to realize the sense, too, that he's been exposed to a lot of negativity and a lot of killing <laughs> for the past like while, so obviously I- he needs that proper training and that proper upbringing to kind of coax him into the right kind of light, because it's it's not uncommon for you know the species of Yoda to obviously be susceptible to like dark side tendencies and stuff like that it's is not uncommon no you'll you, in clone wars you'll see there's more oh, coming but great. um but uh it, it is something that needs to be you know dealt with and accounted for but it's that species in general is just more drawn towards you know the light that but it doesn't mean that an infant of this uh state 
again, like we talked about, doesn't know what he's doing or could get angry and stuff. And yeah. that's why it goes to show how without Jedi or without that kind of mm-hmm. you know upbringing, and maybe the reason Yoda never did things like this uh, avocado is doing is because maybe he never learned it or maybe when he was inducted in the Jedi Order, they weren't able to teach him because they didn't know it or it was just Yeah, a like if I was technique. raised by a Mandalorian, I'd probably be using Force Choke as well. That's not a great uh, parent figure, I would say. No. no. He's been no. tossed around a lot. There's been a lot of killing in front of him. <laughs> and I, yeah. I, I do think it's a good thing to reestablish why whoever wants him wants him because it does show that. Like, yeah, obviously when he saved him for that yeah, monster, this point. thing could be a killing machine if you get him. And it's a powerful use, life form. Yeah, exactly. I think this was that reminder of like, yeah, it is a cute thing, but it's like gremlins. You know, they can turn really bad real quick. True. So. Yeah. Uh, anything else on Baby Yoda while we're talking about? Him? Also, we get the other Force mode too, where he heals Carl Weathers' character. That was another power. Yeah. This Baby Yoda is stacked right now. If he's yeah. in Battlefront, Very that was that was another question. I, have we seen like healing with the Force before, like to that extent? I don't think in like new canon. I don't think right, but I'm sure there's some legends or something. No, there in the games and stuff. There's always yeah, different kind of like Force heal, like okay. Force abilities find, and stuff. Find the like, skill point tree. Or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. In in this sense, no, that's definitely the yeah. first time, especially live action. I thought so. It, 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 it was very dramatic too. Like he or like the force like to is the just the most of how much he the most like classic plot device. You, oh, you really? just do whatever you want. It's like it. magic. It too, really right? is. Yeah, it yeah. essentially is magic. Yeah. Yeah. Yoda could have technically done that to Padme when she lost the will to live, and he didn't. Well, it's like yeah. blame Yoda I'm killed Padme. Pass. In my head, can <laughs> well no, because no, remember because the terrible writing of the prequels, Padme. <laughs> I didn't do remember die. the terrible writing. She didn't die. She's lost the will to live. So but Yoda could could, force will her back But no, Yoda life. couldn't because she would just keep dying because she That's lost right. oh, George the Lucas. will. You could bring live. a horse to, to to water, but you can't make him drink. That's exactly, the insane, right? Exactly. Well, there you go. Look uh, at you. I liked that. It's actually a new saying. <laughs> came out last week. <laughs> I liked that scene because um, it was one, we talked about this on the show, kind of very video gamey. That was that thing of it's just like you're on a quest to a, a mission yeah. and then all of a sudden you get messed up by some side monsters. You're like, I don't have time for this. But I liked that. I liked all the effects it was dark but it was just a fun thing to throw in this episode already on top of i think a solid episode just as kind of horrific like oh my god all yeah. these monsters and then two i liked the force heal because it tied back to episode two when he tried to heal the mandalorian and mandalorian kept saying no so they kind of put some like planted the seeds earlier that he was trying to do something so maybe I he was like, trying to force choke him yeah maybe see. but i liked that whole sequence a lot just because <laughs> he i force choked his veins so that they stopped bleeding I, I think in something like star wars it's good to keep you on your toes and if you take that out then the whole first half of the episode is just them going location location until they get to the main thing which still i think would have been a good episode but just right there again shows that you're also sleeping in the desert randomly mm-hmm. so yeah uh, i liked that whole sequence in the episode mm-hmm. yeah uh here's one thing that bugged me about this episode i i like the campfire scene in theory but i could have really done without the pterodactyl attack i didn't feel like really? that was necessary wow. really? I, I just like felt it. like it was one of the just an action just they wanted more actions and the one more action sequence in the episode but i but uh, well I you really say it's like unnecessary it. but that's what changed carl weathers that's opinion true. about betraying no i i'm not i don't mean like from a story point i just mean like did we really need a fucking pterodactyl fight scene? Oh in yeah, this we what would you have substituted that would have turned carl weathers then and if it wasn't a pterodactyl I don't know. A zombie shmi popping up. And like, <laughs> yeah. That'll be the finale. I don't know. I don't have an answer for you. Because I, th- I think you'd have to maybe change something. Was it just having the action scene or the dinosaurs? I think it's because I really liked... <laughs> I think I, it's because I really liked the scene at the uh, at the campfire. Yeah. I like that. It was just like kind of a heart-to-heart conversation. And it was kind of like this weird thing too, right? Because there's like clearly multiple alliances at play here. And I found that interesting. But then th- that it ended in just like... A uh, pterodactyl fight scene took me out of it a bit. I and I felt like this episode had enough action. Didn't really need that. Just kind of shoehorned in. Though you're right, it does have like plot things, right? Because that's also yeah. how he gets his arm ripped up and like someone, one of them just dies. It's like all right, and then the other like beasts get taken as the well. So yeah. There's definitely like consequences to it. It's not like it's useless to the plot, but I I don't know. I just felt it was a bit cheesy. How'd you feel about the line when Carl Weathers, Yoda was healing him? He's like, he's going to eat me or whatever. Yeah, I, th- I liked that. I one. loved it. I, <laughs> yeah, I actually yeah. laughed at love. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> didn't, didn't stand out to me. <laughs> wow. Yeah, um, I love this scene. This is probably my favorite scene in the entire episode, actually. The pterodactyls? Um, yeah, just... Yikes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I Go hope watch so. Watch Ad Astra, everybody. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it actually <laughs> reminds me a lot of something that happens in Ad Astra. <laughs> Fuck that movie. Golden Geeks 2019. Check Jeez out it on January. Louise, man. Visually, it was just such a like awesome scene in my opinion. Like, 
it would almost seemed foggy like to an extent so that like when the blaster fire was going off it kind of like lit up the area yeah so i i really liked it um maybe like the design of the creature we don't really get to see them fully they look like ridley pterodactyls. so i 100 percent just thought they were ter- pterodactyls so maybe <laughs> i don't know I don't, I don't know what type of species that is in like the star wars canon but I can s- sort of meet you Where halfway on Cannon? like if they replace the pterodactyls. They're with new to me. Else. I'm gonna take a look though. Sure. But uh, uh, right now, okay. very much felt like a Jurassic Park scene with some Star Wars shooters. But uh, overall, I love that scene, like the heart to heart that they're having, and like the change in Carl Weathers. What's his like? <laughs> we character's always name? just call him Carl Weathers. Yeah. I don't know what is it, Taylor. You should know that one. What's Carl Weathers' name? Carl Weathers' name? Yeah. The guy <laughs> in the show. Weathers, I love yeah. when you don't know the answer. You repeat the question to uh, buy time. You do this a I lot. I repeat the question to buy time. <laughs> 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 I'll look it up. I'll look so, it up. So, yeah, like Carl Weathers, y- you get like his change in attitude. Um, and then, yeah, the, I, I don't know why. I just I laughed out loud when they, when he said, it's going to eat me. Mm, yeah. I, liked, I like having multiple, you know, viewpoints at play. Yeah. Right? Because... Uh, that's also kind of why I want uh, Moth Gideon to stay alive as well. Because yeah. like, obviously you could replace him. If you're going to have Empire, you could replace him with anyone. It doesn't really matter. But I think it's more fun to have like known characters with different allegiances and different mm-hmm. uh, informa- amounts of information. And I like that th- how that played in this yeah. episode. Of Grief, Karga. Grief Karga. Grief Karga. Grief Karga. I think Grief Karga? Yeah, yeah, Grief yeah. Karga. I don't believe you. You want to take a look, Dylan? See Sounds like a Wookiee name. I also didn't like care for that character too much until this episode. It kind of... I don't, I don't know, like... Maybe he just wasn't in it enough for me to like really like the character, but just his lines and the way he talks, like e- even when uh, I forget their ship's name, but when they first land and then he's just like discussing with them. Yeah, I, I just love his, his like his vocabulary that he uses and just the way he talks. It's pretty fun. Mm-hmm. I liked how his jacket too just had like the blaster he shot over. It. It. Yeah, he still <laughs> remembers. Yeah, that's good. I wanted to uh, just compliment the soundtrack of this episode. I mean, yeah. that's kind of we do that every episode. Pretty that's been much. the most consistent thing. Yeah, positive. But for I the show. think to me it's something like. If I think of back to my, like my favorite TV shows of all time, I can't, I don't remember, like, none of the soundtracks really stand out. Like, obviously, themes, a, a theme song will stand out, but the score doesn't really in, in most cases. So I think it's just, you know, shout outs here. Like, I, I like the scene when they pick up, um, oh God, what's the friend, the guy that dies, what's his name again? I forget. Quill. Quill. Quell. Yeah, when they pick him up, and then it's it's like the same theme, but there's a, just a little bit of switch on. It's only it's short. It's like probably a couple bars, but mm-hmm. I like a little switch up on that. And then even his death scene as well, mm-hmm. like very simple uh, kind of music that's meant to make you feel that emotion a bit more. But I thought it was it's pretty successful. It's like the theme so. kind of slowed down a little bit. Yeah, part, exactly. So. so I thought this episode once again had uh, good music. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think I have most of my notes, other than some I want to end off just asking like uh, mm-hmm. two I have finale a couple questions. Small but yeah, too. if you guys got stuff to show, go. Yeah, uh, when they're uh, when Mando goes back to the forest planet, to hang out with Cara Dune, uh, they're in the bar, and I don't know. There's just like this blue drink. Did you guys see that? Yeah, it's like a blue. It looks tasty. A giant blue bottle. I was like, <laughs> man, like I don't know what that is. Because weren't I they drinking that the it. first time that they went to that? Were they same bar? I'm pretty sure they had it, and it I was like glowing it, blue liquid. I just remember thinking, like, man, it reminds me of like mm-hmm. Dishonored, like the the whale oil. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> That's what it is. I couldn't picture it. That's the one. <laughs> uh, and then even I guess so when he does go back to that planet, kind of interesting that he doesn't go. Like I guess that bar is in a different place than the villages yeah. with the people, yeah. but he doesn't go and visit. Uh, I forget her name. Go have a quickie or something. Doesn't go have a quickie or doesn't go have a quick <laughs> take off the mask. Um, so I don't know. I thought that was of note. I don't think it's I mean, obviously he kind of had like some time, like a time constraint on what he was doing. So it makes sense. But uh, I thought it was curious. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's also possibly been like months. Maybe he doesn't care about her anymore. It does. <laughs> we do. So. We did. Completely forgot we did about kind her. of theorize <laughs> that, uh, you know, he would go back to her at some yeah. point. And I mean, even if, if he goes back to drop Cara Dune off, though, I don't think she cares to stay on that planet necessarily. But I think that's how you yeah. could intertwine that kind of two plot, plot plots for one, if you will. Yeah. I think they're just saving her for when, like, they want that story to be the yeah. main focus or a focus. Yeah, that, w- that would have made this episode even more crammed. Yeah. So. She yeah. Just, wa- just, she just, just kind of something to note. She's just holding a basket and Mando and he just, like, runs into the ship. Oh, like, shit, we gotta go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Just, like, that same scene. I really like the little, like, I don't know, 1v1 they were doing, like, that device that they had. They linked together. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was really cool. Mm-hmm. It just, it reminded me of, like, I don't know, if you're playing, like, an online game and you're, like, in a duel, right? Like, 
obviously those two you know who who is in it right now because yeah. they're tied together and how c- they could actually like use the tether like i think she was choking him out with it and then mm-hmm. he just like taps it and then obviously that, like that's how she wins so yeah. i thought that was cool also i had a question for you mr mr lord cannon, 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 junkie. cannon junkie that guy that she was fighting was that like a, a, a zabrak, zabrak. A z- a, what is, how do you say it zabrak okay i say zabrak zabrak yeah. Zabro- related tomato. to the rock zabroni yeah. Because that's like Darth Maul's species, right? Yeah. Male Dathomirian. Yeah. I, I, I Dathomirian. recognize the horns. Oh, fuck. Don't take me back to Dathomirian. I see you have a picture of a pterodactyl on your phone. <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> I th- it seems like everyone's just calling them Star Wars pterodactyls, but the closest <laughs> is thing that the best you can do, no, Star no, Wars no. junkies. Hear me Come out, on. Hear me out. The best that I could find, they're native to Utapau, but they could be the same one of the native same. They're native to Utica. Dactylians. Dactylians. And I, they're native Utica. to Utapau, but I do <laughs> think that uh, <laughs> they are carnivorous. But I do think that they could be the same they're thing. carnivorous. That we see they're on carnivorous. Uh, Whatever the plan I, I'm is. just gonna call them Star Wars pterodactyls. Oh, yeah, on. <laughs> that's catchy. I'm yeah. just calling them mini mini Ridleys. Any other mini notes, you guys, over there? I expelled my mm-hmm. supply. I liked um, I is it IH11? IG11. IG11. I liked him just like serving them tea, and then it, uh, I think it's when I don't know. He he just walks him. in, and then it's like of like high like tense moment, and then he just like lifts up his cup. He's like tea. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like that stuff. Especially because so. you see him like crush. Yeah. Pots, really. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and then, yeah, like we, we already mentioned it, but just the little like teaching or like relearning that he was doing with, with Quill. Yeah, yeah that, was good. that was great. Overall, my favorite episode so far. Hell yeah. Um, I was just, I was very happy to see all the characters come back. I love seeing Cara Dune come back. She was fantastic. Really happy with her character. I love seeing IG-11 come back. That was super exciting because I have his action figure and now it's Black like series, completely baby. out the window. Just a soft flex in the middle of his. A little bit. <laughs> a little bit. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, it's super cool to see like if this is the gang all back together that we get for the next season. I was just sign me up right now. You know, I'm all on board for that. I love you know the dynamic of them, and I just think it'd be a fun experience and a good time. And uh, I just think overall, I, I like the setup. And I shout outs to the 501st Legion actually because a lot of those stormtroopers were actually all of them because. I think well, they didn't have the ability to get more armor suits for actors and stuff, so they called up. It's just a bunch of Star Wars fans that all own the armor, and they're part of like a whole <laughs> North American um, organization. Um, hmm. It's really cool. Like any kind of Comic Con you go to, they'll always have representatives there that are in like Star Wars uniforms and like Stormtrooper costumes. They're awesome people. I've talked to a bunch of Stormtrooper yeah. people. They're super cool. When you said five oh first, I was thinking of like. Aren't they, aren't they in, like, Battlefront 2? No, something? this is, That's like, a thinking. real world. I know, I know. Yeah. I, I wasn't thinking that at first, and oh. then I, I realized you were talking about real life. So. Yeah, no, it's a real, to them. a real life organization, and a bunch of them came in and joined in on set uh, with their armor on to That's help cool. out with the filming, which I think is just awesome. Very cool. Very it's cool. cool. I just love that they Disney needed them. It's just like you don't have... Yeah, them. that's it's a little sketch. <laughs> yeah. Disney the did budget's that. a little thin. I, did, <laughs> I wonder how much those people actually got paid or anything. <laughs> how much? <laughs> um, but it was very cool to see all of those troopers and stuff. And I, I yeah, as I said before, I love seeing that uh, Star Wars Rebels tank just pop in with all the troopers come off. And seeing Moff Gideon with his TIE fighter was super cool how it landed. That was really sick. Uh, as soon as the TIE... F- fighter like flew in i didn't know that they like folded like that is that the first nah, time we see that or that, is that like clone wars uh, stuff? that's not clone wars stuff i'd say it's probably the first time i've ever seen a tie fighter like that do that before yeah. because cool normally they just land as they are yeah. as you can see like hangar bays and stuff those like movies, the long right? yeah like the longest question i had was just like how the hell do they get out of that <laughs> wow. vehicle wow like how the hell do they get out of that vehicle if it's <laughs> it's like no hangar well dro- there's there's jump. a hatch on the top right yeah go Ooh, watch force awakens they jump yeah, guy. the hatch. Fucking guy over The way here. Taylor says it, it's like guy. it's a known, like... <laughs> you didn't know? Of course. Just on I know Star there's a hatch. Knows Star Wars that. pterodactyls. Like a 15-foot <laughs> jump, I swear. Yeah. Okay. So we, won't, we won't discuss that. 15-foot jump. I'm oh. on your side. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I, I just... Okay. I, oh, yeah. <laughs> it was very cool because when I didn't know how far the wings were going to fold, and if they folded, it would have reminded me more like a TIE hunter, but uh, it, it was very cool how it was just a regular TIE fighter that kind of like, yeah... Has like landing gear like an X-wing. <laughs> <laughs> you like that? All the audio <laughs> listeners fully understood what that pause was. Um, uh. Trying to think what else that I really enjoyed with this episode. Yeah, very sad when Quill died. You know, Quill is spelled K-U-I-L-L. I did. I had the K-U-I-L-L? subtitles on. K-U-I-L-L. Yeah. I spelt it uh, K-W-Y-E-I-L in my notes. K-W-Y-E-I-L. 
E I L. Like quail. Qu- quail. Well, it's not quill. It's quail. Quail. Emphasis quill. on quill. It's quill. Spell it at you could put an H in I there. Mean, first, I thought it was you quill. Could. And then I, I don't want to over like quill. 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 Cool. Where, where do you get off? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, it was just, it had so many good things. I definitely agree. <laughs> I definitely could t- detect the bit of rushiness in it. Uh, but I, m- I mean, it did. Rushiness? Rushiness. The Russian? Rushiness. Rush- the Russian-ness. <laughs> the Russian-ness. Wow. A like lot it. of it was Soviet. <laughs> yeah, I think the way Travis just said it is um. good say it. <laughs> <laughs> Simple is the best way sometimes. <laughs> but uh, it, it was just, it was a very fun episode and. <laughs> Yeah, you feel like you're going into your overall rating here. No, no, no. I'm just tackling yeah. the episode. Um, sure are. <laughs> let's, see, let's see what he says when we get to the overalls. I, I definitely <laughs> really, really I enjoyed. Uh, what's that? I thought this was your overall. I no. apologize. I really I'm enjoyed that confused. they uh, loaded the blurgs onto the Razor's Crest as well. And then when they all like marched off on the blurgs when they landed to see Carl Weathers. Uh, what was his name? Grief Karga. Yep. Yeah. I, I like how he's like they're they're coming too, and then Mando's like, "What?" He's like, yeah. "I've spoken." I've sad, spoken. sad. We won't hear that ever again. We're never gonna hear it again. flashbacks. Yeah, <laughs> flashbacks <laughs> to that one camp. He just like thinks back to his head. He's like, "I have spoken." It's oh, funny. Okay. I think I've learned it though. Disney will make black series figures for characters that will live in the Mandalorian, and they mm. won't make them for characters that will die. I see. Dang. Yeah. Is Don't there is there, is there an IG eleven one? one? There is an IG eleven. I have oh. it. So Quill doesn't have one. Quill doesn't have one. No. And what about Moth? No Toro. Uh, Moth. I haven't seen one oh, yet. Maybe they will. They will. Um, I hope they make a Toro one. Fuck that guy. No. Well, <laughs> Toro's actually my favorite character now. <laughs> you can get Jawas. Oh, okay, okay, they lived. And um, they're in other movies as well. Well, it's specifically called Off-World Jawa. <laughs> oh. There is a regular Black Series Jawa, but that's a they're Tatooine cousins. one. It's their cousins. <laughs> Not related. Different dialect. Star Wars alien type creature. <laughs> Star Wars. <laughs> Star Wars hood- hooded alien. Shout outs though again that black series Yoda figure. Okay, what about okay. The, the, the <laughs> it show. comes with a knob, what about a little show? circle knob thing from the ship. Uh, Taylor, uh, on the show, the show. God, what a great People show! People have so much time to listen to this episode before they go to Rise of Skywalker. Yeah. They need to get it concise. <laughs> you don't information. get lost in the show. You're just, you're. Yeah. I'm giving them these juicy facts. Um, <laughs> giving them something. Yeah, I, I really they can go enjoy to your Twitter for your juicy facts. The Twitter, yeah, yeah they can go to all your manifestos. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Uh, you guys love my tweets. I do. Um, I don't understand. You <laughs> finally tweeted again la- like two days ago or something? It yeah. made no sense, but I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't just spoil it for everyone. Yeah. Um, but uh, I really, really enjoyed how... Because I, I originally thought that Carl Weathers was going to... Like, I thought... Grief Karga. Grief Karga <laughs> is the man. I thought he was actually telling the truth, and he was offering this to Mando. And I thought, okay, this definitely is a good opportunity. But... They even set it up, too, after he got healed and he was talking to the other bounty hunters. I thought, okay, is, it looks like he's explaining it or he's just kind of, like, really shook about what happened. But I it wasn't – I like that it wasn't the same atmosphere that we had where that female Twi'lek was talking to the other ex-Imperial guy. Because, you know, the same context where you don't know what they're saying, but one felt really suspicious and this felt like it was different dialogue and he – that's obviously where he was really kind of trying to sway them to not go through with this. And – um I when I thought that he, Carl Weathers was gonna die there for a moment, I thought, okay, the other bounty hunters are now gonna just abandon the deal and try and capture uh, the avocado. But I like that there was some more depth to that story and grief. Cargo just kind of whipped around and totally could have instantly killed Cara Dune, but Mando would have survived because of the best car. But just shoots the two bounty hunters in the back. But um, yeah, that was really cool. That twist on the story. Yeah. Cool. Like Qui Gon's be bygones. It's true. <laughs> Shouts to Jessica. Shoutouts to the gift. When did Jessica say that? It was a meme she dropped earlier. Oh, I didn't see it. Oh Taylor's boy. last tweet. I'm like, hey, I'm like, hi, I'm like, chic. Yeah, I didn't fucking understand that at all. <laughs> I thought it was like a smash. He's just constantly or subtweeting people. Are you done? <laughs> he subtweets sure. without actually Kay. quote like quote tweeting them. What the fuck is a subtweet? I, I don't explained even know it what to that you means. a few weeks ago, and you're like, okay, I understand now. And you said you <laughs> he was on his it. phone. He's like, yeah, yeah. It's I like I have to explain <laughs> the word hubris to you every single month. I'm it's gonna like his g- Hoobers talking. I'm going to give this a 4.75, the exact same score that I gave episode 3. Like we talked about, obviously, lots of good salt stuff. Had some minor quibbles here as far as pacing, some rushiness. Uh, but I really enjoyed this episode. I wish every episode was kind of this this way as far as story progressing. And I, I don't need every single episode. I'm fine with the odd, you know, adventure episode. But this was nice after three, three chapters of 
not all of them were filler, but kind of close to just, you know, the good old, the good old, sp- yeah, Space Cowboy Adventures. So 4.75. I'm uh, excited for next week. I'm, I'm happy this is an episode I enjoy going to the finale. Unlike if it was one of the episodes of the previous weeks, I would have been a little bummed out. But mm-hmm. at least next week, I'm excited to see uh, how it's going to end and where, where we're going to be taken. What are those? Uh, they're Death Troopers? Is that what they're called? Death Troopers. The death Black troopers. I'm going to give this episode oh. 10 Death Troopers out of 12. And that is my final rating. Wow. I am excited to review this episode or the seri- the season next the episode. Series. I almost said series. I guess I could say series because s- no, yeah. one no. Why? Because why a series would be you've seen it's it everything all, that's so but fun. No, 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 no. Because they're filming season two, so you know something's coming. Oh. Series I'll just ask Taylor because he's a scooper. He's an S plus scooper. He's a scooper. He knows every S tier. <laughs> is this a series? Overall, or a season? this is my favorite episode, though. I will say that. Well, that's it sick. will be a series because there's a second season coming out. And well, it's, seri- series. it's a series no matter what. Taylor, what's yeah. your rating yeah. on this episode out of five? Out of five? Well, this that's what you do normally, right? Yeah. It I is. just want to keep it consistent. Um, this is easily. <laughs> well, so far, well, you've done one four out of five and the other is five out of five, right? Was it a four yeah. out of five or a four point five out of no, five? No, it was a four out of five. That's a little Rhetoral steep. Talent. Well, uh, yeah, you're gonna draw. Well, so it's really a four point <laughs> five. Steep. In a few weeks, <laughs> it'll be a five out of five. Um, for this episode, um, out yeah, of five. This one, episode seven. You know what you're giving it? Stop playing yeah. coy. I gotta bait Wipe the Wipe that shit eating grin off your <laughs> shit <laughs> eating. <laughs> your it's my vegetable soup from Tim Hortons. Oh, well, that is shit. <laughs> That's eating quite grin. the image in my head. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, I'll give it a five. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. A shocking betrayal. <laughs> Whoa, what a thunk. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you like what we did here, please subscribe because like we said, Skywalker is going to be dropping the neck this Skywalker. weekend. Huge spoilers review. It's obviously uh, spicy it's gonna be online huge. already. Yeah, I think we're going to be discussions. And then next week is The Mandalorian. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> uh, Avengers Endgame was 4.5. Yeah, 4.5 hours. So, And then next week, uh, uh, this is the finale for Mandalorian. And then the week after that, you'll be getting a bunch of best of slash kicking the year off content. So we're doing mm. best of decade for uh, movies and games. We're going to do our 2020 video game and movie previews. Mm. We're going to do our Golden Geeks for 2019 January. So mm. a lot of just... It's going to be fun. Really yeah, fun. a lot of good debate. And this is why I also go to our Facebook and Twitter because some of those, like the Golden Geek ones, there's a fan option. And you guys, if there's a tie for the winners, you'll help us break those ties. But... We do give out the fan awards as well, like we did last yeah. year. So you can help us in the best Very prestigious one awards as well. So it's important that we get as many votes oh, as possible. Oh, of course. We need it. So that's yeah. why I stole Taylor's Thunder, but go to Facebook and Twitter. you have anything else to add, Taylor? Uh, show us to Movie of the Week, The Best of Mr. Bean. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's a series, isn't it? By Rowan yeah. Atkinson. So it's not really the a series. Movie, are they making it's a new series seasons? seasons? But something yeah. can oh, be both man. a season <laughs> and a series. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Next week is the finale. I promise you it will not be boring. Please go enjoy Rise of Skywalker. Hope you all have a good time. Mm-hmm. May the force be with you. Always. Always.